All right. Okay, so just just a phone attached to a pole near the telly. So if I'm probably just off screen, I've, I've just done some microphone testing. Um, I'm not recording straight into a microphone, so I'll try to talk loudly. Uh, I'm just going to pop out of the room for a bit and let this run. Uh, what we're doing here is we're just trying to keep a card uh, roasting and toasting, trying to keep its uh, temperatures up high by keeping it fairly well loaded, uh, just to make sure that it's it's all running fine, that, that my temperatures are staying where they should be and quiet. Uh, it's early time of morning here. I'm going to go feed some pets. I'll be back in just a moment and uh, we'll talk about how you can make your, your recent AMD graphics card with, with possible ray tracing capability uh, to work in actually all the ray tracing titles and uh, possibly application crashes you might be getting or instability or, or ways to uh, to fix what is a lot of troubles and, and speaking from experience myself having inserted an AMD graphics card and having found that either after a driver's update or after the, the new games get enhanced with their respective uh, ray tracing capabilities part path sourcing light sourcing I think it's the Chinese translation um, yeah the, the the games just crash so there is a way to fix it there is ways around it I'll bring up my settings uh, in, in just a moment after I feed these animals and uh, and we'll talk about what it is that uh, we're, we're trying to, to sidestep or to circumvent in the short term in terms of making a very capable hardware uh, run ideally flawlessly so we want a nice reliable experience and, and we're going to talk about that in just a moment So we've got two different animals there, three different types of food. I feel that they almost eat better than I do. It's like the cat knows where the camera is. You're looking in that general direction. Yeah. But fussy cat wasn't really into it. Now I'm a bit fussy. I like my graphics running at ultra. And I set all my games to running ultra. Oh, wrong button. Let me just put a, uh, a light spell up because your watch utilization go from just south of 100% to very much, no, no, haven't got my light spell set up on this one, that's the button press I'm hoping for, no, definitely not, um, not what I was trying to do right there, okay, so look, we are sitting at about 99%, right, that number's only relevant if we're using 99% of the video card, if it's actually running really, really fast, quite often if you go to an easy area of the game, it'll, it'll drop clock speed down, if it's, if it's able to easily draw the frame rate, it'll just start taking a holiday, and it'll it'll just cool down. Now, okay, so let, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Everyone's looking, why would you want a game at 30 frames a second? Okay, now, I agree. Uh, as, a, as a fast gamer, as a pro gamer from uh, early, early professional gaming, when, when I was first getting into gaming, but all through the 90s, I'd run at quite a refresh rate. So I'm, I'm used to, you know, up, up to 200 hertz quite happily, uh, giving up free sync type monitors, giving up uh, that sort of technology a few years ago when you go to the TV gaming before HDMI 2.1. Um, I made a conscientious decision that as long as I could brute force 4K at 60 frames a second or, or whatever, I'd, I'd be all right. 
So when it comes to light sourcing or path, light pathing titles, ray tracing, um, things get a little bit different, right? So I think the way NVIDIA runs is it's BVH, it's top down, uh, AMD work from the bottom up. There's slightly different methods. Uh, in time, we're gonna find the, basically the, the entire gaming industry, which is, if you wanna sell your software, you sell on console, consoles using AMD chipsets, um, obviously gonna benefit from the AMD tools, things like Unreal Engine, which uses Lumen. Um, the methods for doing ray tracing, apart from the first few titles that have been get in mediocre performance, GIMP, um, to run at, you know, gotta have the flagship card by a particular company, and even then you'll only hit 4K60, right? We, we are talking here the most engineered marketing strategy ever, right? A, a product that came to market when the competitors had pulled out the aspects of their video die that would be good at doing, potentially that sort of math. Um, Nvidia just went, okay, what, what's their greatest weakness? What's our greatest strength? And then just doubled down on it and marketed it downwards. Now, we're not gonna talk the immediate past, we're gonna talk about solutions to an actual problem that's in the market. It is a short-term problem because when the dust settles, we all want better, better light pathing, arguably. We want it done right. So things like Lumen, I would argue, do it arguably better. They do about seven-eighths of it correctly. Um, you, you can, at a low frame rate, get little bits of screen uh, issue, but nothing, nothing compared to the issues of, of doing it the current method, which is using a lot of math and a lot of CPU and a lot of, a lot of computational power, not really uh, achieving results that uh, is it suspension of disbelief that, that really achieve what they're trying to achieve? So look outside of a handful of titles, it really doesn't matter. But those handful of titles do exist. And my experience is in all of those handful of titles, I will either get a crash to desktop or a complete computer shut down inside of about 10 seconds of running them. And usually within just the first sequence of the game too, there's usually one or two things in there which just, it's harder than any other spot in the title after that point. It's very easy to see this is an engineered or a manipulated uh, market in terms of generating sales of particular hardware. Um, but again, we don't want to talk about the, 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 the actual, we're going to circumvent this issue, right? So look, the reality is um, this game is an open world game. Most open world games that come out, you don't want to play them for six months. If it's an open world role playing game, you want to give the team a little bit of time to sort out any, any bugs and glitches. Uh, this game wasn't too bad. It, it got a couple of patches basically straight away. Uh, on March the 9th, it got a patch which pulled down the quality of PC Ultra just a little bit um, and actually kind of broke some of the, the ray trace implementation. So ray tracing shadows is now something that every gamer is basically turning off, even the ones that want to persevere with uh, light sourcing, light pathing. Um, it just it creates more issues in the game that weren't there on launch. So look, until the development team figure out what they consider is a fair working build for ultra graphics and don't hopefully think it too much, which is generally what seems to be happening when everyone whinges going, oh, some new cutting edge game comes out and I can run every other game at ultra, but I can't run the new game at ultra with all the settings maxed and, and whatnot. And so the developers just go, you know what, we don't need the bad press. We'll just, we'll make that, we'll make the light a little bit less accurate and we'll, we'll take down the number of reads that we're running and we'll just make it a bit simpler and then it'll stop the people whinging. But we don't really want that. We want, um, you know, our, our video card two years from now is gonna brute force the games that have come out in this year's market quite easily. And it's nice when we can scale them up still, right? When you get your future video card, it's nice to be able to take your old games you couldn't quite run with everything ultra and just go ultra, 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 and then just run it. And yeah, finally, Red Dead Redemption looks as good as all those screenshots we've seen on the internet. Okay, so so look, it all, all, all's good, can be done. But the elephant in the room is, why am I running at 30 frames a second? Okay, now the reality is, when I got this game, and you've probably seen some internet reviewers if you care about this sort of stuff. And, and they, they benchmark a high-end video card at a low screen resolution. Okay, and you think, why would I do that? I wouldn't buy that video card and then run at that screen resolution, right? It's got nothing to do with that video card, right? What it is, when you run at the lowest resolution with all your settings set to low, there's, there's no load, essentially, being sent to the GPU, the graphics card that it can't handle, right? And so at that point, whatever frame rate you can get at absolutely low settings, that's the fastest possible frame rate that your computer is going to be able to render. Now, it's always worth finding a scene or a sequence in a game that is the hardest spot to render, because that's one of your test points, right? So I've got a bunch of save games and locating spots in the game where I can just quickly zip to and go, oh, I expect you know, 22 frames a second in this area, and then I go there and I change my settings, and I'm like, oh, it's now sitting at 27, oh really happy. Now nah, that's not quite true. I don't tune games generally for 30 frames a second, ever. But I tune this game for 30 frames a second quite simply because when I found its low points, 
quite consistently. What am I going to get as my low frame rate peaks? It would be like running through the, the courtyard here in Hogsmeade, be sitting around 33, right? And that's at, at low settings, right? So I figured, okay, if my lowest frame rate is going to be 30-ish, I don't want to be varying 60, 30, 60, 30. You feel that. You feel that in the controls. It gets a bit janky. And you get frame pacing issues or frame timing issues, which is worse than having a, a frame rate drop briefly. You can sometimes handle that. If you're running in a straight line, you might not even notice it. But if you're trying to turn your screen a lot, yeah, you'll notice if your frame rate drops below. Competitive shooters, you need the high frame rate. There's certain games you need it. But some games you just want to play for the beauty. You really want your mouse cursor to get where it's got to get, when it's got to get there. But <laughs> that's... You know, so long as your frame pacing is good, you quite often won't even feel that difference. We'll talk about that in a second. I tried some of the the enhancement modes that doubled your frame rate, like the FSRs and, and the various things, and I found with FSR2, for an example, it, it, th there was an added latency. I imagine that's the same with the, the later DLSS models, is that um, th there is a latency they add, and I found that in terms of playability and smoothness, 30 frames a second on the mouse, and I use it with this little trackball, um, the trackball is wireless, and it's still way quicker than like a wired controller or using a controller, um, sorry, any, not bringing in, the, the controller added latency, but even just using a mouse. If I was using the frame enhancement modes, FSR2 or DLSS, which I'm not using, but it adds latency too, um, they felt less smooth than having 30, just brute force, and, and the frame time on 30, even using a wireless mouse, is just quicker than using FSR2. Right. So, you know, I, I, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, excuse me. Okay, Yuki, where are you, puss? Oh, it's an exciting mid-video moment. Um, I'm house-sitting for someone else's cat and... Uh, because of the food I put down this morning wasn't wasn't a bit fussy, probably uh, going gourmet, all sorts of gourmet foods. But um, yeah, when the cat's hungry, it seems to be more grumpy. Uh, I think it was just picking on my cat, which is just you know, a bit of a tragedy. Oh, it's okay, Chichi. It's okay. Do you want out there? Okay. Well, there you go. You can escape. You're good. Mate. Good cat. All right. So. 30 frames a second. Now in this game, knowing that my lowest frame rate point was going to be just above 30 and I didn't want this frame rate variability everywhere I went. If I looked at a pretty vista, it might be sitting at 30. If I ran down a tight corridor, it might be sitting at 60. That frame rate speed difference, having had it in games like Skyrim in the early days where your dungeons were all 60 frames a second and your overworld was 30, it's okay when you want to see a pretty game. But it, it, unless all your dungeon running is in dungeons, it, it can get a bit tiring when you do combat at 30 frames a second above ground and then you get to do combat in a dungeon at 60 frames a second and go oh this is so much better so learning and, and sticking to one frame rate so so what what i ultimately did is i realized okay 30 there's quite a few spots in this game that even if i'm brute forcing low graphic settings just due to the game not being perfectly well designed for pcs you know probably more optimized for one set of hardware which would be potentially consoles um, there are spots in the game where the game's just it's drawing game world beyond the walls of the room you're in and it just bogs right down when you see the frame rate difference so look, knowing that 30 was going to be like my best right i just went fine let's lock the thing at 30 right so as soon as it draws 30 frames a second the video card just starts taking a holiday now why does that matter well actually there are times when if i've turned that setting off the game will crash on startup Right, I can't even get into the game. And that's true for the Witcher RTX. That's true for quite a few of the RTX titles. If I do not set a frame cap, right? And the reason why that column is kind of there and it's kind of important and it's on the screen right now, right? If I do not set a frame cap. Now, in most of the ray tracing, tracing titles, I'm aiming for 30. But again, we're, we're setting everything to ultra and the game looks amazing. And as long as the frame pacing is there, you won't feel, it won't feel like 30, right? It'll feel good. It'll feel really soft, like 60 done with the frame enhancement modes. It'll actually feel better than that, feel more responsive. And um, you might not believe me until you try it, you wouldn't know, so that's fine. Um, as, a, as a gamer that likes a couple of hundred hertz and, and likes me free syncs and variable syncs, I can absolutely vouch for 30 when done spot on with perfect frame pacing. 
is way responsive. Now, okay, I can't do that on a wireless control. It's got an extra latency there. I, that's a, get a bit sluggish for me. But if I'm on a mouse, the speed that that screen turns around at, in terms of where I move my finger and how quickly it gets there, it's instant, right? I, there is no latency. And so I do not feel I'm suffering for 30 frames a second. Wouldn't even know, right, essentially. Uh, unless it starts to drop. Uh, and I'm turning and it's mid-combat, right? Then I would notice, but uh, you can tune away from that and that's what I'm gonna encourage you to do with your video card. That's why we got these numbers down here, right? Because you can set the parameters of what you want your video card to achieve. Now, what I was finding in all the ray tracing titles, the junction temperature was going above 110 degrees Celsius. So junction temperature is just the worst measured heat point from a whole bunch of sensors on your video card. It's designed that one, one video card company doesn't even give you that information. Consumers get scared when numbers get above 100 degrees Celsius. It can actually go to about 115 degrees Celsius. At 110, there's a whole bunch of intelligent software that will kick in that will actually downspeed the card for you. So it's pretty hard to get above 110. Once you go above 110, the card will death clock itself. The problem is, is the ray tracing titles will take a 30 degree jump in junction temperature in less than a second. Right, and quite often just getting to the menu, right, for some reason the menu is designed to crash these games, I can get above 110 degrees and crash my machine out. If, I'm, if I've left my video card running default speed, default fan curve, default te um, voltage clocks, you know, every, everything. If I leave it at defaults across all the ray tracing games without setting my frame cap, bam, gone. The, the machine will shut down on startup or it will have major issues. Um, you, you can't get past the keep in, in The Witcher, although that might have been fixed with a patch, but again, you can fix it with settings and you can play the game. Um, but what I'm finding across all the ray tracing titles, even before they get patched to work, is if we, the user, take control of these settings in our, in our own hands, we can make our machines work right this very moment without having to wait for further patches. So, okay, so the trick, first of all, is getting getting con control of your temperature, right? And at 110 in your junction, it will start to throttle down. And so the second part of this guide is actually the reason I wanted to do this video clip was how I got ultimate speed, right? And it wasn't locking my GPU clock up at 2300. I think I can sit at about 2500. It's a pretty good version of the card. Um, but I found with the Witcher RTX in particular that once I locked that down to 1850, I could finally play the game silently. I'm all about silent. I like my GPU fan. It's about 1500 or less. I, I can't hear it above ambient room silence, right? And certainly when I'm back in my sitting position a couple of meters back, um, even if that goes up to about 1850, it start, it, you can just start to hear it. But anything above 1550, I can hear. So 1650 is about where I aim for. At the moment, I've set my fan curve to go up to about, it might even peak at 2100, if, um, if it was to get really hot, I guess. But I've, I've, I've tried to keep it, I like it less than 1800, because then I can start to hear it. 1650, I can sit up, oh, that's so silent. It's just about completely, completely, um, unnoticeable. So that's actually the last thing you set is your fan curve because initially when you're trying to find out what can my card do, you'll probably have your fan right up just to just let it cool as much air as possible. Right? You just want to see what you can achieve. But what I'm trying to say is you can tune for any set of settings. So what I tune for is about 200 watts power consumption under max usage uh, with a temperature around about 100, 105 degrees uh, under full load. Um, and I find that 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 works for me, right? And so generally, to hit that 200 watt mark, I change my clock speeds. To hit that, this card will happily take about 320 watts, might be 350. Um, I, from the day I first got it, I would happily game at about 280 watts, but I found that I could ha have very, basically no frame rate difference, and I could tune it right down. And that's what I go for, is just um, maximum power efficiency. You can, you can do different things. What I find is maximum power efficiency goes hand in hand with running silently, and running silently is, ah, change and so basically I have it run quieter than the PS5 um, my GPU power generally sits at 150 watts um, but there's headroom for about 70 watts more where, where if the scene gets just crazy it can just go oh look I'm just going to brute force this I'll just bump up in speed a little bit and just um, keep ripping through it just to maintain that magic number there now what I really need to do right now is just bring up if you don't mind my oh, Bluetooth give me a second no, haven't got it up. All right, so let me just jump over to something that gives me a desktop. No, that doesn't. Ah, my bad. I'm, I'm on a Bluetooth keyboard. I don't know if it's missing certain keys. 
Let me get in the other travel briefly. Okay, what do I need? This here. So hopefully that'll fire up. Okay. So you can come in here and you can you can set up under your metrics tab. So under your performance, under your metrics. You can come over to overlay and you can say show metrics overlay. You can set that up to a key on the keyboard, um, which is easy then to turn it on and off. So for me, I can just go control question mark. And my overlay down here will kick on, kick off. Um, here you can set your transparency to size if you think, right, that's quite handy. It's at the point where you're, you can actually actually have a look at what you're doing. You can have a look at what you want it to track. Um, so things like GPU memory, if you want to know, you can put that up here. Um, for example, if it's just added it, there we go. It will be saying 14.7 gigabytes, right? Yeah, 16 gigabytes, that's huge. Um, but for the sake of testing, I don't need that information right now. Um, so, oh, settings, you can set your sampling interval. By default, it's set to, I think, two seconds or one and a half seconds or something. So that can be more useful if you make that uh, down a little bit. You can just you can turn it on and off just there if you want to be. I'm going to go over to tuning. Okay, so this is, it's listed here as global tuning, but I actually set the profiles up for the Witcher. Um, Witcher, Skyrim, uh, your open world games generally, sometimes they like a little bit more memory speed. Uh, most other game types don't benefit whatsoever from more memory bandwidth. Um, you, you can, once you learn the game genres, you can actually create one or two profiles. You know, ah, first person corridor shooter using DirectX 9, you know, I can, I can smash the speeds up because it's not using any of the, the custom shaders, the, the light sourcing units and stuff and the things that get really hot in the, in the chip die if it's not using those parts of the chip die you'll actually find it can run you know 20 25 2600 megahertz well that depends on your card and your cooling um but yeah so so you need to learn your machine i mean i i've got to admit i've turned one fan two fans around one at the top one at the, the bottom and my case temperatures dropped by five percent throughout the entire case you know to get that sort of information Sometimes you need monitoring tools. You need to just be able to bring up your, your temperatures. You'll be able to monitor them over time. When you play your game, you see how much power you're using from the walls, etc. You know, every, every PC is a little bit different. It depends on what sensors have got in it. Something like hardware monitor or any, any tool set that you like to use to just keep track of your, your, what's going on with your PC, how utilised your CPU is and stuff. You, you know, get in there, learn that stuff. Um, I've overclocked my CPU, but I find that in a bunch of games that there's no frame rate difference whatsoever between running at this speed or this speed, fine, I'll run at the lower speed every time. Um, learn your machine. Once you know your machine, right, you can't expect some company across the world to optimise a game to your unique PC build, right? Your unique PC build is, is probably only a handful of identical machines scattered all across the world, and you, the five of you aren't able to get together and say, hey, how are you handling this thing? Right, you haven't got a little community of people, you're going to have to know your own product, right? You have to know your PC like the back of your hand. Anyway. What have I done? So I've come in here, I've gone okay, under custom, right? So you can you can overclock, generally the way to overclock modern AMD cards is under vaulting. You know, give them less power. Uh, the more power that's running into the chip, the hotter it gets. The hotter it gets, the, the less efficient or the less effective the power is that's in the chip. It actually has a, a drop off where it, the hotter it gets, the, the less effective. And, and you end up putting more power into your fan to try to cool the thing. And you, you wind up on the wrong side of the power envelope. You, you, you're wasting lots of power trying to make the chip run like a megahertz quicker. You're wasting lots more power trying to make the fan keep it cool, right? You're best not to go down that path. You actually find that the best way to get more speed out of a typical modern AMD chip, going back to about the 570, 470 series, you know, the 580, 480 in particular, that was the trick. Having used Vegas and Furies before that, that was basically the trick. The Fury, it was still more the old school method where you were trying to overclock it. But from the Vega forward, every AMD chip I've seen, um, the best way to get a little bit more speed out of them is to give them less voltage so that they run cooler and then ramping your speeds up until you're kind of back in that middle ground, right? But I'll do a video on, on how to find your maximum speeds in any given thing elsewhere, right? What I've done here is you'll find that your maximum speed doesn't lock in at what you lock in. It goes as close to it as it possibly can, right? So I've... As I said, I set it in the Witcher. I was benchmarking the Witcher first because it was an easier game to make crash. Um, and I found that once I dropped it down in clock speed to about 1850, uh, and it wasn't, it's probably set to about 1950 or something, but it, it clocked to about 1850. Um, in that game, 
that just got rid of all the crashes, right? And so then I used that profile and I came to other games that either weren't starting or were acting, getting too hot too quickly, sitting, sitting at 110 on the junction, basically. And I found by putting that profile in, in Hogwarts, the junction was hovering around 95. And I thought, oh, I've still got 10 degrees of thermal headroom here to go to my fan profile. So I just upped the fan profile a little bit at that time. And then I just incrementally increased that speed until my junction temp started to go above 100 while staying at a low fan speed. And I thought, cool, so I'll have that extra little bit of speed. It, it did potentially boost my frame rate at that time. But uh, what you'll find is that uh, you, you lock in your own speed. I, again, I, I encourage you to start at a lower speed. And again, this is a pretty good iteration of the video card. Uh, 1850 for The Witcher, for me, got me out of trouble. Um, you, you know, just set it, set it sizably lower, even one-sixth lower than what your card's capable of, um, because a lot of the die is not getting hot. It's just running regular video card, re regular graphics card stuff, but then all those little, uh, the heavy math required to, you know, work sort of bottom up on the BVH tree makes the AMD chips shy currently doing the mass market mode of, of light passing, right? But when lighting is done through lum nanite, the lumen, I should say, in Unreal Engine 5, or when, when it's lighting is written for the console chips from, from the ground up, because the AMD RDNA 2, you'll find that your AMD RDNA cards on PC will have a much better time of running that particular light sourcing. It's just not the market standard at the moment. Right? All, the, all the games are kind of coming. There's probably a handful of them. Um, so look, the voltage is down from 1200. I've locked it down at 1153. Um, some caveats with that. You've actually got to make sure that you don't just drop the voltage and that your performance doesn't decrease. You've actually got to make sure that you can maintain your clock speeds and that I use benchmark testing software. Um, I, PC Passmark is a good one because I can just run through it quite quickly. I run specific tests, and if I change a particular part of the speed of the die, I just make sure that it translates to real numbers. Right? If, if you change the the speeds here, and say you crank it up to 2700, and you go, oh look, it's running at 2700, but if it doesn't run one frame quicker than 2300, it probably hasn't got enough. Uh, voltage behind it to allow it to actually do that math and achieve those numbers and, and actually achieve them effectively. So it's, again, this is just a bit of an overview. If, if you want to just jam my numbers in because you think they might work for you, uh, give it a try and then maybe play from there. But uh, the auto overvolt, uh, the auto undervolt will set, I think it's 1175 on this card. Um, every internet take on overclocking RDNA 2 generally says it's about 1149, 1148 is the low point there. And then people set it up a little bit higher because they find in some games it might not be perfect. Um, I did have it running lower. I've bumped it up a bit. Um, but uh, look, 11.75, if you feel that it's, it's not got enough power, I think 11.75, still taking it down a little bit in voltage, will get possibly better thermals, but it should still have enough power headroom to actually be able to run the chip at speeds that you care for. Um, so if you want to do that, now look, for myself, I've got a version of an RDNA 2 card that the Samsung memory which runs at about 2150, just easy as, you can just chunk that in and it just works. Um, really I should be tuning that down a little bit. Um, the amount of voltage, the amount of extra power I'm having to give to run my memory at the bleeding edge isn't worth the extra power when I can find its most power efficient spot, which is down around 2120 or so I think it was. Um, and that's actually going to leave more power in, in the video card for running the speeds quicker, right? So open world game, memory bandwidth can be beneficial. Um, so in this case, I've left it up. I'm still just trying to brute force a lot of areas in the game so that I can improve my memory frame rates. Um, there's a couple of spots, a couple of spots where I can just, just can get it significantly below 30. And go, ah, I found a bottleneck. Ah. But look, I've set my fan curve. I like it quiet. Um, if I set it down a little bit lower than that, I actually just don't hear it at all. I've bumped it up at the moment. So wh what's going on here? Power consumption. I've set my power limit down low at a minus. So not only have I dropped the voltage here, unlike most people that crank the power limit plus 10%, like, like when I want to overclock it, give me more power to hit higher headrooms, right? I do not want my junction temperature at 110. If your junction temperature is sitting on 110, you are not getting the speeds that you think you are getting, right? So try and tune for your junction temp to be either 105 or 106 or somewhere just, just a fair bit below 110. As I said, when, when you turn the game on, I can have core temp 60, 65, junction temp 69, maybe a couple of degree hotter, plus 30 degrees instantly, instantly. 
right? And the amount of gains that that, that that plus 30 degrees will take you above 110, 115 junction and just shut the machine down. If you can't get your game started, right? Try by locking the frame rate down, or more importantly, lock um, your speeds down so that you are not possibly about 1850 because it's the Witcher with uh, the light tracing. Um, but just start low and then you increase it until your junction temperature gets up to a spot where it's still comfortable to have a run. Now, just, just to show case in point what we're actually doing here, all right, there is a reason for all of this. Um, what have we got? So I had to go with FSR mode. When I first ran the game, I didn't run FSR at all. Um, 1440 resolution with everything cranked to ultra was very doable. Uh, but what I found because uh, ray tracing and light pathing shadows is currently broken, if you turn that feature off, I was getting like an extra 10 frames a second. I was finding that my lows were back to 40 ish. I was like, oh, oh, I've got frame rate to burn. So I actually opted to raise the frame rate. Now I can do it not using FSR and set it to about the same, um, but there are definitely moments where the FSR potentially smooths out a low and where I was sitting at 24 frames it'll bump it up to about 28 frames. Um, they're just a couple of spots in the game. Um, do I get a couple of graphical issues with the FSR? Sometimes when I'm flying the lake beside me you can see that there's a like a pixel shader I think effect done called Fogel Mist that doesn't get, uh, there's edges around the player's coat that get caught out. There's some um, rings that you fly through where it feels like maybe the inner part of the ring is being processed a bit differently. I don't know. I, I can spot maybe one or two things where I'm like, oh, it's like it's pixel people and trying to find a fault with it. I could find it. Um, but I've got to admit, I much prefer running. Uh, most people wouldn't be running the game with the light sourcing at much higher than 1080. I think the recommended specs is for like a machine running at quite low resolution um, if you want to turn everything ultra. Um, so for myself, seeing the higher textures in, in effect, conversations in particular, if I wasn't in FSR mode, the conversations and fr the frame rates were dropping down to like eight frames a second uh, in worst case scenarios, and you could see it. Uh, any, anything less than about 16 in, in the cutscenes, you just go, whoa, that's janky as, but if it stays above 25, 26 in the cutscenes, you actually won't notice uh, it frame dropping. So I just found that uh, FSR mode got me out of trouble, but the best thing is FSR 1 does not add the lag or the latency. So at 30 frames a second, it still feels way quicker than 60 frames a second with FSR 2, right? So yeah, FSR 2, they might have improved it, might have, they combated a few of the graphical issues and they, they might have improved some of its capabilities and, and accuracy, I guess, of the colours of the screen, I don't know. It's not worth it um, to me. If I'm having to run at 30 frames a second and if I lose responsiveness, then I don't want a game at 30 frames a second. At the moment, this 30 frames a second feels better than most games at 60 frames a second. I'm trying a lot of them out on console and whatnot. Um, pfft, absolutely crap. So look, at 30 frames a second, even even using a wireless mouse, now there's a trick with these, if you pair them up to your Bluetooth controller, they're 18 millisecond response time. If you use the chip that comes with them, the Logitech Bluetooth receiver, they run at about 12 millisecond latency. So not too bad. And that's a MX Ergo, I think it is. Absolutely perfect little trackball design. Um, yeah, people say it takes time to learn to use a trackball. I was playing Ziggurat, which is a it's my primer for online competitive shooters. Um, Ziggurat was absolutely magic. It took me about two rounds um, to to start to trust the trackball and being able to flick it and have my cursor just resting on the forehead of my target. So I can completely recommend a trackball, even for gaming. Absolutely for gaming. Um, but you know, to each their own. For me, it's just suited being on a couch and not having to have a mouse mount under. That's not the point of my discussion right now. It's um, just to have a look at, you know, we are running ultra, 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 ultra. As I said, we've got ray tracing reflections on, we've got the ambient occlusion on, but at the moment, ray tracing shadows is just breaking the game. Um, I would say absolutely turn it off. Look, do you lose a lot from ultra quality there? You don't. The ones to crank down, I mean, post-process quality with the CPU there, it isn't generally knocking that down to high. Foliage, definitely knock that one down to high. Um, fog and sky down to high. Um, they'd be the ones. Now, other people see particles, um, maybe population quality, but things like view distance for me, I just want ultra on that. Um, textures, look, at the end of the day, the quality of the textures we're getting, if you're not running a 10 bit color panel, the benefits of running the top end texture sets, I can't imagine if you're not doing HDR and doing really complex, accurate lighting, 
I don't think there's going to be one iota of difference probably between high and ultra. Um, they're just, they've got to be too heavy. But the modern textures, it's got to be more about color depth than actual resolution is, is my take. But um, look, I was just trying to say that the game can run, can run beautifully. Um, okay, so just as a case in point, I'm just going to briefly, I, I do a little run through Hogsmeade. This is my, my regular run. Now, I am running the overlay. Uh, the benefit of the overlay is it forces it to run in a windowed mode, which can remove any vSync tearing that I was getting. Um, but, and you can make the overlay essentially just one line of, of transparency at the bottom of the screen, so you don't even notice that it's there. But it was taking friends um, screen tearing out for me. Now, I'm using an older display. Um, this one doesn't have the variable sync tech. Now, looking over this way, is it to be able to hit the 30 frames a second, looking at that tree with the, I guess it's a cherry blossom in it, is, a, is, is quite difficult. Looking over this way, you've got lots of alpha, lots of grayscale, which is actually quite tricky to render. Um, but as you can see, this is just the start before the run. So the motion blur there looked like it was, uh, and most people turn that off, it's a flavor thing. I did turn off vignetting, I did turn off chromatic aberration because they're, um, basically a, an old school monitor and the technical issues of that. When I'm playing the game, I just need a game world to the actual world. But um, look, I'm just gonna hit run. So what, what I'm expecting is by the time we get up past the lolly shop, we're gonna have the frame rate drop probably to 27, 26 as we run past the front of that. Um, and so this particular test has been designed for a reason. It's not the best run I've ever seen, but uh, and certainly the, the machine is stable at, at these Okay, so I, I do it as a run around town. I don't actually stop. I, the, the whole point of my run is I don't really want to give the machine a chance to cache ahead. And I even, a bit like football, I, I throw a couple of dummies. I throw out there, I look down, I scroll past, and then I go back to a run and head this way. Now I'm heading towards the courtyard, but I actually then bolt up the hill um, because I think there's a spot up here where it probably wants to clear out all the memory behind it and go, look, we're now focusing on going this direction. Um, I just run far enough here that I've got all of the valley, I try to get just a quick pan from the castle back to town and then here. So I expect 27, 26 is coming down the hill here. It is trying to load the courtyard in ahead. Now if I'm not running through the courtyard, it'll happily sit on close to 30, just about 100%. If I'm running through it, I can get these worst case scenario drops where it drops down a little bit. And that's the only time in the game where I see a frame rate difference based on my CPU speed. So even though the CPU is never hitting 100% on any of the cores, there is a benefit of a little bit more CPU speed when blistering through that courtyard. Okay, but that's it. That's the end of my run. So that's with basically running Cracked Ultra. And I look at that as worst case scenario. Again, if I do the fight in the courtyard, um, it's going to be pretty smooth. Uh, it'll, it'll sit at the 30s even with trolls breaking through walls and stuff. Um, I find that all the cutscenes, everything work with these settings. But that's particular to my video card. What's relevant for you and yours is that if you've got a, a different tiered AMD card, you might find that, that 1850 isn't low enough to get your Witcher with ray tracing started and working. Um, so just set it a bit lower. Try to keep the junction temp well below 110. Um, but just remember that there's, it, those RTX titles can jump 30 degrees on your junction in like a second easily. And if that shoots you well over 110, you might find that the game either shuts or doesn't work. Now I found with this game, even just the pre-caching shaders, if that wasn't set to locked, uh, or even the menu screen, if, it, if I was running at 60 frames or vertical sync, and it would tr my video card was running flat out trying to draw 60 frames, I could easily hit over 110 on the junction and the game would crash even for a big game. Um, so the way I got around that was I started the game, I alt-tabbed, so I had something else open in Windows as an overlay, and in the background, then Windows put an, a frame rate limit of some sort on it. It just didn't try and over-render past 60. I was able to get into the settings in the game. I was able to turn my frame rate cap back on, so lock it to 30. Um, just, just if you're trying to run this game, um, I recommend FSR1 mode if you want that extra little bit of resolution, uh, possibly taking some burden off it. Um, but you'll find that the latency is not made worse. And if you're not on a wireless controller, like if you are on keyboard and mouse, um, 30 frames a second with that no added latency with the right um, up sampling mode, ooh, game is perfect, absolutely, absolutely deluxe. And there is something really nice about being able to see it running all the fruit. Um, because the game does have a lot of fruit. It's a very beautiful game. Um, highly recommended. But uh, look, 
that's been a quick rundown of Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, I can only hope that it helps somebody out there. Uh, look, a proper video clip encouraging how to measure, how to find your absolute max numbers, how to actually tweak games, looking at The Witcher, looking at um, RTX type titles possibly. Um, more to come, and uh, thank you for watching.